Hi everyone, uh, I'm recording this video to show you uh, my solutions to midterm one. Okay, so the first question. So the first question, uh, well, uh, the common mistake you may have is uh, on this algorithm, you are supposed to find i and j, and i and j are supposed to be the indexes. So if you give me this solution, and I will say it is wrong, but it is a minus zero point. So this is the version I'm looking for. Uh, well, and the goal is we want to find the pair of an i and j as two indexes. So i is smaller than j, and then ai is greater than aj. Okay, so this process will be uh, kind of similar to a uh, uh, bubble search. So we have an outer loop and then we want to go from the very beginning to the end. And then for the inner loop, what I want to do is I want to start from the right side of the eye and then go all the way to the end. So if you, uh, and then if we consider the worst case and then uh, for this line it will run for one time and then the second line run for n times and then for the third line it will run for n minus one time in the first round and then n minus two on the second round etc and then uh, for uh, the i uh, for the lines four and line five well in the worst case they will run uh, they will be triggered at the same time the same time that we enter the line three so if you add all of uh, all of them together and then you are likely to have this tn well and then after you have this tn and you you need to prove uh, the big o and big omega and remember to prove the big o and big omega and you have to find a constant c and also you have to find an n zero so uh, this is a c and multiply by n square and then starting from n zero or higher you will find the tn is always smaller or equal to uh, the CFN and then uh, we know FN is going to be uh, we are going to use the N square so well you just need to find the C value and the N zero values for me so that you can prove it is a O N square it is also Omega N square and then once you can prove that it is both O N square and which is the upper bound and then uh, for the lower bound Omega it is also an N square so we can say it is the Sita N square Okay, the second one. Uh, the best case of the quick sort, it is the n log n. Uh, well, uh, the quick sort. Uh, well, in the best case, it should be uh, we find the good pivot all the times, and then when we are doing the partition, we have fifty percent on one side and fifty percent on the other side. And then the next question, the worst case, uh, worst case of the quick sort. And then, well, if we are if we are in the unlucky mode, and then we have a uh, part. Uh, we, when we are doing the partition, the pivot is either the largest or the smallest. So we have the pivot and then all the values are going to be on one side and then there's zero value on the other side so this is a worst case and then for the partition of the quick quick sort so when we have a pivot already and then we are just visiting each of the value and then we are visiting each of the value only once so it's going to be a uh, uh, it's going to be a linear time and then finding the high higher level between two integers. So this is going to be considered as a constant time. So the process can be, uh, for example, uh, we can say uh, if i is greater than j, and then we say uh, return i, and else we return j, right? So, well, for this kind of code, and then you can see uh, for everything in uh, what I have written, and it should be a primitive step. So we have four primitive steps, but anyhow, it can be considered as a constant time because it is a four, so it is constant time. And then for the searching heap, well, several several of you guys make mistake make mistakes on this kind of question. So when we are doing a heap, and remember to have a valid heap, it should be a uh, nearly full tree structure. So so on the this is root, and then we have two nodes, and then we have those two nodes, and then if I want to grow this tree in full, and then on all the levels, uh, the nodes should be filled from the left side to the right side, and then if I have one more, and then that's it, right? So this is a valid uh, heap structure, and then in the heap structure, and then when we are doing the search, and the worst case, uh, the worst case scenario is going to be we go here. And then we go left further, and then we go left further. And then after three hops, and then we should either 
find the value we're looking for or we say okay on here on the left side on the right side they are both empty so what i'm looking for the value i'm looking for is not in this heap structure so after three hops and then b should either find the value or we can prove that we don't have such a value in the heap so it should be a log in here and then for the next one uh, the build heap. The build heap is supposed to be O n. And uh, in our lecture notes, we talk about the tight upper bound of uh, for building heap, and it is supposed to be linear. And then for the worst time <coughs> linear search, <coughs> excuse me, for the worst time linear search, and the worst case is going to be we visit all the values from the beginning to the end, and then we don't have such a value. So we end up wasting our time on visiting all the members, but for each member, we only visit once, so it is a linear. And then for worst case of the bubble, it is Owen square, and we talk about this in homework one. Okay, and then the jump search. So for this jump search, and then uh, the process will be, well, we want to figure out the jump size, which is the square root of the uh, square root of the n, and n is the size of the array. So every time we want to do a jump, so using the m as a jump size, so we first visit the, uh, the first value, which is the index 0, and then we jump to m, and we jump to 2m, etc. So the goal is we want to find a valid small space so that we can do a linear search. So when we are doing the linear search, and remember, we only linear search in a search space of m. So if your search space is higher than m, and then you are wrong. Okay, and then uh, the the edge uh, the edge case to be considered will be, and for example, if your value is even smaller than even smaller than the first value, or the value you're looking for is even higher than the last value in the array. And then you can say, okay, uh, because this array is already sorted, and then we don't have such a value guaranteed. So this is what is what I did. So I want to compare the, the, the value to search and be to, uh, against the first value, which is smallest, and then also against the last value, which is the largest. Okay, and then, uh, uh, what I did is, well, when I'm doing a jump, and then I want to check, well, uh, on our, uh, on the index m, for, uh, on the index km, is this value the value I'm looking for? And then I also uh, check this value. So the value on the k plus 1m, is this the value I'm looking for? So uh, on each of the time, I'm checking both the value on the beginning and the uh, the value on the end and uh, well it really depends on how uh, you implement that there's no right or wrong answer for the implementation so when i do the grading and first i want to make sure that you have considered the edge cases so the value you are looking for is either too small or too big to be in the range and the number two uh, i want to make sure that when you are doing the linear search the linear linear search should be the space of the linear search should be the size m uh, nothing higher okay and well depending on how you check the value on the km and the value on the k plus 1m and then the answer might be different for this question so let me go uh, talk about this question first so uh, explain all the exit conditions of your algorithm so on which can what kind of condition that your algorithm is going to finish so well in our, my algorithm since i build in this check so well i will say if the value is smaller than the smallest value in the array or higher than the highest value in the array and then I can say uh, the value is not in the range and otherwise and then I have to uh, do the jumps and then if I uh, in the if I find a, a valid range and what I can do is I can do a linear search and for this linear search I will either find this value or uh, I cannot find this value in my linear search, I'm going to return a none. Okay, and then for the last one, well, it really depends on how you implement the checks. So I'm talking about this, this line and this line. So what I did is, well, uh, for the begin index and the end index of a size of the M, and then I check both ends. So in this case, 
for my algorithm, it doesn't return the first occurrence of such a value because if it is on the very beginning or it's on the very end, and then I'm going to return the index. So it doesn't guarantee I'm going to be able to find the first occurrence of such a value. But if you remove, if you erase this line, so if this line is erased, and then uh, your implementation will be able to find the first occurrence of such a value. So the answer is depending on your implementation, your answer to this question might be different to mine. And then when I do the grading, I make sure that I read your algorithm and I, I understand this algorithm before I grade this question. Okay, so for the next one, recursion. Uh, well, for the recursion, and then I'm doing the sub, uh, I'm doing the iteration way. So, but on the left side, I'm doing the uh, I'm I'm doing uh, I'm solving the recursion step by step, and on the right side, and say if I don't know what is t n minus two, and then I'm gonna do the scratching on the right side, and then I also do the scratching of the t n uh, n divided by four. So eventually, well, I can go from here and then to here. So four t n divided by four and plus a three. And then I have 8t and divided by 8, and then plus a 7. So for some of the students, and then you make a mistake on the constant part. Uh, well, this is uh, the uh, this is the calculus uh, mistake. And then I, when I do the grading, I tend to be very generous on this type of arrows. Okay, and uh, eventually I can say, okay, so if I sub the, uh, it, the Python is going to be two uh, two powers k and t in divided by 2 powers k and then plus 2 powers k minus 1. So this will be the Python that I find. And then after I have the Python and then when do I stop? We stop when this value in the parentheses is a 1. So and then when k equals log 2 n and then this process is going to stop. So and then eventually we can get a non-polynomial, uh, we can get a Oops, I can get a polynomial version of the Tn. Okay, so once I have the polynomial version of the Tn, uh, and then you also have to show the big omega, and then uh, big O and big omega, and then conclude it is the site n. Okay, and then for the next question, this question is really uh, a small one because uh, this is a, a basic recursion to have the sum of n. And uh, in, in this one, uh, linear, and then it is linear because for all the values we visit once and only once. So this is supposed to be a linear, and then no proof is needed. Uh, for the last one, uh, the master theorem. So for the master theorem, and remember, uh, we want to answer, we want to have the very quick answer on the small components first. So what is the A value, what is B value, and what is the Fn value. So after we have those three values, and the next part we want to figure out is what is N powers log BA. So, and then a comparison. Fn versus n powers log ba, which one is faster? So on the first case, well, we find that uh, Fn is faster, and then n power log ba is slower. So this puts us to case three. And once we're in case three, and remember, you have to prove that it is possible to find a c value so that a f n divided by b is smaller than c f n. So you have to show that it is possible to find such a c value before you can apply the case three. So you can't miss this step. Okay, and then the second one, and well, we answered what is a, what is b, what is a, uh, uh, what is f n, and then after that, what is the n power log b a, and then we do a comparison, n power log b a versus the f n, which one is faster, and then in this case, then we find they are equally fast. So, and then the answer is supposed to be uh, the f n, and then. Uh, fn and uh, or n, log, n power log ba and multiply by log n. So this is supposed to be the, uh, the big cycle. And the last one. So well, uh, we have the a, we have the b, we have the fn, and then for the uh, for the n power log ba, it will be n square. So n power log ba is faster than fn in this case, and this will put us to uh, case one. So for the case one, and then we are going to take the uh, in power a uh, cita in power log b a so it will be a cita in square, okay. So those are all the questions for uh, midterm one. And if you have uh, we have already finished the grading. And if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Okay, you feel free to come to my office hours. Okay, bye.